Rare Planetary Alignment Cardinal Climax. Hey all. I just wanted to give a heads up for a rare planetary alignment that is supposed to occur around August 1st that astronomers are calling a cardinal climax, and I wanted to share this Seeking Alpha blog interview of Arch Crawford posted by Hewitt Heisman Jr. with you. Granted, this is centered around trading, but if it does have the described effect, it can affect many people and many industries. This summer the planets form a rare euro a cardinal climax a euro alignment, which puts financial markets at risk, says Arch Crawford. Publisher of Crawford Perspectives since 1977, the veteran sky watcher uses a mix of technical analysis and astrology to gauge which way equities and other asset classes are headed. To learn more about this unorthodox investment process, I recently spoke to Mr. Crawford about some of his best calls, what day the cardinal climax strikes, and how to prepare for the turmoil he expects. Here is an edited version of our conversation. Certain planetary alignments put people under extra stress. And one way this stress manifests itself is in financial markets. After all, financial markets are a mix of fundamentals and emotion. Since astrologic events affect our emotions, I find it profitable to study the planets. It is common knowledge that when there is a full moon, there are more car accidents and other forms of aggressive behavior. Since financial markets partly reflect our hopes and fears, these markets are prone to mood swings. If you can anticipate these mood swings, you gain an edge over investors who focus solely on interest rates growth forecasts, debt loads, and other traditional yardsticks, I have examined every substantial move in the Dow Jones Industrial Average since 1896, and I find that when planets are at difficult angles, then owning stocks and commodities is riskier. When two planets form a 45, 90, 135, or 180 degree angle, with Earth as the midpoint between the two planets, the reasons are partially understood, in the 1940 Euro TMS, radio propagation specialist John Nelson studied planetary alignments to time sunspot activity and solar flares, and thereby help his employer, RCA, reroute shortwave radio transmissions efficiently. Years later, when I got interested in alignments and became friendly with John, he would tell me when a flare was in progress. I would then call a broker and find that, typically, stocks were dropping and gold was rising. In concert with new and full moons, where the tidal forces brought the atmospheric disturbances closer to the earth, extreme volatility would ensue in markets where a significant emotional component was already in progress, for instance, the highest sustained period of ionospheric electrons measured by geosynchronous satellite took place the week before and during the October 1987 crash, and then dropped back on the day of the stock market low. Recent studies by physicists, biologists and cosmologists show gravitational and electromagnetic activity affects the growth patterns of many species here on Earth. Much of this data was collected and correlated by the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. In Albuquerque, New Mexico I once did a study of the worst days in the stock market. Two-thirds of those days occurred in one-third of the calendar year, centered on the fall equinox, around September the 22nd to the 23rd. Maybe there is a symmetry that governs the universe that we haven't at Euro TMT yet figured out. I read about it on the front page of the Wall Street Journal in 1963, while a technical market analyst at Merrill Lynch. I was the first assistant to the legendary Robert Farrell, who was repeatedly voted best on the street by his peers in the annual Institutional Investor magazine poll. My curiosity peaked, I looked into this subject and found that difficult alignments correlated with difficult markets. The correlation was too well defined to be chance. 
During 1929 to 1932 there were several difficult planetary alignments. On August 24, planets were in the tightest five-body a euro e conjunction, a euro or same ecliptic longitude, in at least 800 years. A euro oh it doesn't get any better than this, a euro I reasoned. Therefore, a euro a severe decline will follow, a euro I told subscribers. Turns out, August 24th was the top. From that alignment high to the October 20th low, the Dow fell 33%. A difficult planetary alignment preceded a difficult stock market. Our research showed a Mars Uranus a Euro a crash cycle Euro beginning August 6, 2008 and ending in late March 2009. So beginning several months before August 6, we repeatedly told subscribers, a euro oh neither Wall Street nor our government will be able to hold markets up against the deluge. Further, on September 2nd we told subscribers that the worst part of the crash would occur on October 10 plus or minus 3 trading days. We repeated this forecast on October 2. Our headline was, a euro a market crash a euro dead ahead dot a euro turns out, October 10th had the largest number of new lows on the NYSE ever, at 1203. There was a full moon after the market closed on October 9th. Also, there was a euro a grand cross a euro alignment at this time, with the sun opposite the moon, and squaring Uranus opposite Neptune. So this is another example of when a difficult planetary alignment preceded a difficult stock market. Our March 2nd headline was, best bet, nearby low. Then on March 12th we told subscribers, we believe this rally confirms a strong buy. A euro in April 1986 we had a lunar eclipse conjunct Pluto. The close proximity with Pluto is rare. So we told subscribers, if you don't feel this one, you're not alive. We were prophetic, as the April 26th Chernobyl accident raised radiation levels worldwide. By the way, we have another lunar eclipse conjunct with Plato on June 26th. Pluto a euro a rule as a euro nuclear power, debt, interest rates, and the use of force, say the astrologers. Maybe June 26th is the de facto start of the cardinal climax. In November 1989, we observed a Saturn conjunct with Neptune, both opposite Jupiter to the day. This alignment happens every hundreds of years, i.e., it is extremely rare. Several days later the Berlin Wall fell. In our July 1990 we told subscribers, a euro oh this will be one of the worst days of the century. There will be coercion. The use of force, a large explosion and heartlessness or cruelty August the 2nd to the 7th. On August 2nd, Saddam Hussein unexpectedly attacked Kuwait. What alarmed me was the lunar eclipse forming another grand cross, this time with Mars opposite Pluto. In our letter mailed September. For we wrote that when Mars hits the solar eclipse point on September 7th or September 8th, then the US will be at war. We are still in the covered wagon days of this as a science. Much of the time is without major significance. Also, the a euro a big alignments a euro can be tricky to interpret. But some alignments a euro this summer a euro TMS cardinal climax, for instance a euro are unambiguous. On August 1st, give or take a week. We a Euro TMLL have the most five planet alignments in perhaps thousands of years. Known as the A Euro O Cardinal Climax, A Euro this is the meanest, nastiest, most challenging and most transformational of any planetary phenomena in all of written history. This is the view of the planets from New York City on August 1. At 6 a.m., we have the most planets in the tightest alignments and at the supposedly sensitive zero degrees of cardinal signs. It makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I looked at records going back to the 1800 A Euro TMS, and this is the most difficult alignment I found. When I was at a conference in Boston last month, 
someone said this was the most difficult alignment they have seen in the last 1000 years. Another person told me this is the worst alignment in 10,000 years. Worst cases include a nuclear accident, nuclear war, massive societal collapse, maybe a pole flip, which can wipe out nearly everything. Cardinal Climax is especially intimidating because of the proximity to the widely touted Mayan calendar end date. Plus, the Christians are looking for the return of Jesus and or or the rapture, the Muslims await the return of the umpteenth Imam, the white buffalo has been born, and Jews are fighting over the right to rebuild Solomon's temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. These are all signs of a Euro and Timus a Euro by many different cultures. The one thing most convincing to me is that there are more people alive on the planet today than all who have ever lived in recorded history, so it may be that every soul is on board for this event. The top may be this month or in May, based on normal seasonal and astrologic patterns. Definitely global. The best money will be made on the downside in shorts, stock index futures, negative at for euro TMS, and put options. However, we do not recommend that subscribers buy options a euro especially if they are not seasoned traders. With options, you can get the direction right but then maybe not get paid in usable currency before the whole system melts down. We are probably seeing a peak in general optimism about the economy and commodity prices. When suspicion arises that a double dip or worse is about to return, we will see the commodity averages slip into the tank, even assets in the ground will not hold against a worldwide depression that is well on its way. We are Euro TMD rather be long German, Swiss or Australian bonds, although US bonds will probably do well on the initial declines. Do not overstay as the US dollar will come down hard. The United States will come apart in this depression. Our markets may be the least of our worries, given this powerful and chaotic frame. The Mormon mandate of keeping two years worth of food and water in your home is common sense. When CNBC becomes a sports station exclamation mark comma a euro to quote my friend Jim Grant. Nearly all of our frustrations in the market result from our unfulfilled expectations about what we thought a market a euro should a euro TM do. No one knows the future. Also, investing is probabilistic. So if you think knowing how to a euro read a euro TM planetary alignments increases your probability of success. Then get planetary literate, a wee bit extreme if you ask me but I just wanted to put it out there for all of the good people here in the fast lane. Topher. How about a little capitalistic conspiracy theory with that cardinal climax? I don't like reading things like that. When you say a full moon brings on aggression all you're doing is planting seeds in people's heads giving them a reason on a subconscious level to act like an idiot because the moon is full. I know it's negative, but I also know that it is going to occur which is why I'm just putting it out there so that everyone here watches the backs of themselves and their families. I know it's a small possibility that anything will happen, but being aware is not a bad thing. What you said above here holds a lot of truth but on a much greater level than a few people here who may read this. In all honesty this could be used as a front of some sort too. Who knows? All I know is I'm the type of guy who likes to be aware of possibilities. But of course as we all know, there's been doom and gloom talk forever, but again, being aware is not a bad thing. Ah, I tried to read it, but honestly kept losing focus after about the second paragraph. Basically the world is gonna collapse or something? I've watched 2012 like many of you, I've seen the recent coverage on huge earthquakes, floods, heard news of an actual solar flare in the next years, etc. People have been saying the world is going to end or be destroyed since time began. What happens, happens. If something does, oh well nothing you can do. If it's a bust like Y2K, great, more time to make money. Hell we all will die one day. The thought of knowing you'll die one day actually shapes your biggest choices in life. So work hard, live fun, drink good wine, be merry, 
and follow your heart. Beititi I'm sure you have learned things amazing things being in the military. Some things that people just wouldn't believe if they didn't see them in person. Same thing W or full moons. I worked in the hospital for years. We never had to look at the calendar to see when it was a full moon we just had to be in the ER. That was always the night that lots of strange SHT came in. I'm not saying these weird things were rooted in violence but there is no doubt in my mind that full moons can trigger some strange behavior in some folks. Least that's what I saw. Russ H. I can agree on that. Whenever there is a full moon and only then, I wake up every time at 3 a.m. on the dot and can't sleep. Whatever I try to do, I can't fall asleep. The best method to pass the time is to turn on my iPod and listen to it, laying in bed. I don't know why this happens but it does. The good thing is that I am fully awake by the time 6 a.m. turns around and full of energy. An astrologist? Okay. Hey James was up. I've seen 2012 too and basically chalk it up to Hollywood capitalism. Also, I'm not a doom and gloomer either. As a matter of fact, it strikes me as odd that people have only been making a big deal out of this 2012 thing within the last couple of years or less. If it was the end all you'd think we would have been hearing about it since the day we were able to comprehend but interestingly, it only really surfaced these last couple years. My concern is much deeper rooted whereas to give you some background, on September 11, 01, I was going through my usual morning routine of firing up my computer and getting ready to trade, and turning on CNBC back when CNBC was actually worth watching. So, I was one of the people that got to watch the World Trade Center attack in its entirety. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because while watching it burn, I also watched Maria Barty Romo covered in dust in the NYSE and obviously shaken with fear but bravely reporting and doing her job to the absolute best of her abilities. I felt for her because she could have left but she didn't. That's human and real. Now while watching the towers burn, I saw the demon face in the fire look around and IT stayed there burning in the fire for maybe 20 minutes. This face was real enough that it made the front cover of Life magazine. But, what's interesting is it doesn't matter how much YouTube or other video source one would use to try and watch that face again, because I guarantee that you will never ever see the real thing that occurred live ever again, and you want to know why. Because it wasn't real, it was superimposed. As a matter of fact, it was so fake that I can understand why someone of such arrogance would want to bury it as it was a bit excessive, and a link that needed to be destroyed. You will find pictures, but you will not find the entire video seen in its entirety. Now, if you're still reading this SMXB, the planetary alignment I mentioned above is going to happen. And I believe that it will have the capacity to alter some emotions on Earth but as Beititi mentioned, people may use this and act on IT. Bad people. Dot maybe not, but as Catman Do has said, TV is poison and this may be a turning point to where people may actually have to start thinking instead of just being. Be aware. This is certainly an interesting theory. Are you planning on capitalizing on this phenomenon and have you performed any comprehensive back tests? Well, I am a fan of natural order and do use Fibonacci retracements on occasion along with other instruments that are based on Fib numbers. I also am quite fascinated with the work of W. D. Gan and his predictive abilities derived through planetary alignments and time back in the early to mid 1900s. To the best of my knowledge he was and still is considered to be one of the best traders of all time. But me as a trader in the year 2010, and knowing that the VIX is trading in an upper range, I personally won't hold anything for an extended period of time regardless of where and how the planets are whirling, and would rather be closed out of a position within two to four days. In reference to the above interview. Obviously I'm aware of it and if things do start breaking down, I believe that it may then produce a higher probability to the downside, if anything, due to a self-fulfilling prophecy if not of the alignment itself, 
However, I'm also quite aware of the power of the bots that are now starting to take over the markets worldwide, and I believe that their influence and growing power is not to be ignored. How about you? What's your take? Why do you find the theory to be interesting? Thanks for contributing to the thread. Christopher. I find this theory interesting because it highlights how seemingly irrelevant circumstances can drive the financial markets. Victor Niederhoff for once wrote a paper on font size in newspapers and its effect on stock prices. Apparently, the font size affected the perception of certain stocks and hence affected price movements. As such, a certain level of causality existed, which seems to be the case with your theory as well. Then there are cases where correlation exists despite the absence of causality. In Wall Street Warriors, Richard Taglianetti an investment manager mentioned a successful hedge fund manager who bought and sold stock depending on the movement of animals in Africa. As crazy as that sounds, he found a correlation and made a great deal of money. You're definitely right about bots. There is a huge effect on the markets by super-fast computers operated by large investment banks and funds. This type of trading exacerbated the gigantic drop we saw back in May. By the way, what is your primary trading strategy? My area of interest is Statarb and pairs trading. Consequently, these types of trading strategies are perfect for periods of high volatility. I agree, but I wouldn't place trades based on it. If it does prove to move the probabilities, I would trade with it but I still would wait for a setup. With me, I lose when I break my rules. So regardless of what the underlying reason or influence may be for a market direction, as long as I follow my rules, my equity curve will remain consistent. Yeah? I find this interesting too and would think that this does have some form of relation to natural order. I've never seen Wall Street Warriors but now would like to. With my trading, I am about as simple as it gets. I buy and sell equities, one at a time. I create a list based on certain fundamentals but primarily technical, and then wait for a technical setup, while keeping in mind what the S&P, DA and NAS are doing and open the position. I don't know if you've followed any bits or pieces of my story here that I have scattered throughout the forum, but basically I'm starting over so currently I'm an all or none trader and will be using close to 100% of equity on my trades, once my new broker gives me the go ahead. However, when or if I make it to the next tier, I will then be adjusting my position size according to the volatility of the security being traded. In reference to the length of time that I like to hold positions, when the VIX is trading in higher ranges, I like to get in and out quick, usually 2 to 4 days, and when the VIX is trading in lower ranges, I'm comfortable with longer term swings. In reference to your trading style, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding of Stethub is essentially compared to that of a portfolio manager. Whereas when your holdings reach overbought or sold levels, you reduce the position sizes and increase the opposing paired position. And please if you could, for the readers here who may have a developing interest in trading, perhaps explain how this type of trading suits you and why it works well for you in periods of higher volatility. And what pairs do you like to trade? And do you continue with the same strategy or adjust when volatility decreases? And again. Thanks for contributing to this thread. Christopher by the way, I sent you some reputation. US Tomahawk missiles deployed near China send message quote from article the submarines aren't the only new potential issue of concern for the Chinese. Two major military exercises involving the US and its allies in the region are now underway. More than three dozen naval ships and subs began participating in the Rim of the Pacific War Games off Hawaii on Wednesday. Some 20,000 personnel from 14 nations are involved in the biennial exercise, which includes missile drills and the sinking of three abandoned vessels playing the role of enemy ships. Nations joining the U.S. In what is billed as the world's largest ever naval war game are Australia, Canada, Chile, Colombia, France. Indonesia, Japan, 
South Korea, Malaysia, the Netherlands, Peru, Singapore, and Thailand. Closer to China, Carrot 2010, for cooperation of flow readiness and training. Just got underway off Singapore. The operation involves 17,000 personnel and 73 ships from the US, Singapore, Bangladesh, Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines and Thailand. See who's visit, finding a way forward on US-China relations. China is absent from both exercises, and that's no oversight. Many nations in the Eastern Pacific, including Australia, Japan, Indonesia, South Korea, and Vietnam, have been encouraging the US to push back against what they see as China's increasingly aggressive actions in the South China Sea. And the US military remains concerned over China's growing missile force, now more than 1,000, near the Taiwan Strait. The Tomahawk's arrival is part of a larger effort to bolster our capabilities in the region, Glazer says. It sends a signal that nobody should rule out our determination to be the balancer in the region that many countries there want us to be. No doubt Beijing got the signal. From what I understand about Statub, it relies on the deviation of long-standing high-order correlation between stocks. Judging from what I've read so far, the mathematics involved is intimidating to say the least as Statub is heavily related to quantitative finance. Conceptually, my form of pairs trading is relatively simple, for each long position taken, initiate an equivalent short position. Overall, you should be aiming to create a portfolio of long and short positions which will produce profit as long as the long positions outperform the short positions. The reason this strategy appeals to me is because, one it protects your portfolio from market directional risk. You would be reasonably insulated from unpredictable market drops too unlike traditional trading, it doesn't require you to forecast overall market direction. I find it much easier to determine which stocks will outperform or underperform over a period of time as opposed to predicting long or short term market movements. Although traditional Statub relies on co-integration to identify potential positions, I've spent most of my time crafting my own indicators and techniques to identify opportunities. They've had reasonable success but they are still an inexact method of trading and I have dozens of hypotheses still to test. Overall, fundamental analysis is probably the most effective approach to long-term pairs trading. Volatility is extremely beneficial as it creates larger movements of both long and short positions. A problem I've encountered is the effect of commissions, which significantly cut into profits. To overcome this issue, you either need to hold the pairs long enough to make a decent gain or select high beta stocks. Volatility in the markets produces a greater return proportional to the commission required for the pairs. Also, I've taken the time to read your story and I find it really inspirational. Are you trading regularly? I've put my trading endeavors on the bench as I am focusing my energy on e-business. At the moment, the stock market is far too demanding in terms of time and capital. Hopefully, once I have enough money, I can return to my pair trading investigation and craft a profitable automated trading system. Those that dismiss either Arch Crawford or the effect of planetary movements on human activity show their lack of education. Arch has been rated in the top tier of Time A Digest and Hulbert Financial Digest multiple times for his uncanny accuracy. Definitely one of the better prognosticators over the past 40 years on major market dives. Try some due diligence, won't hurt. Although I rarely trade based on astronomy, Arch has been way too accurate over the years, on major market dives, not to pay some heed. Time to get defensive and sell into this increase in equity market value over the past week IMO. The technical indicators are mixed anyway, and the markets are often emotionally driven. Another oil spill. Ah, I see the approach. It seems like a sizable amount of money would be needed to sustain profitability. 
Would buying or selling calls or puts perhaps help with portfolio risk or does that create problems within your system? Or is it already derivative based? In reference to commissions, have you checked into retail brokers like Trader King, Zeco or Options House? The retail brokers are getting more reasonably priced it seems. With my approach to volatility when using the VIX to determine time V price, I like to couple it with which degree within a geometric angle it is trading in, meaning, if you look at my avatar, you will see that even though the index has moved into an upper trading range, which does signal higher amounts of fear or volatility, it is still only trading pretty close to horizontal which to me means that time is more prevalent than price, which is why I prefer shorter term positions when the volatility is trading in a higher range. However, if the VIX forms ratios where price succeeds time as it did in late 08, I would then most likely be holding longer term bear swings. Something I like to keep in mind that works for me when positioning with the VIX is that it is only a near term indicator. Well thank you very much. I've been through a lot and have been shot down so many times that I lost count, but it is my ultimate dream that keeps me going because I know it is possible and I believe it could be one of the greatest achievements of the 21st century. As far as trading currently is with me, I had an investor group who wanted me to trade for them but I let them go last week because they were too controlling of what was needed to make this work and they were taking way too much time to do things like have meetings, finalize an operating agreement and fund the account. When they did eventually send the check it wasn't done in the way I instructed and the broker sent it back which was the last straw for me as time keeps ticking. So, I used an active LLC of mine to open an account and I funded it with half of my savings. So, I'll be back in the saddle sometime this week. Also, I know I'll be a bit trusty at first because it's been a couple months but I'm comfortable with my abilities and I do get extremely precise once I get that first week or two of screen time in. In reference to your last statement with automating your system. Were you referring to 100% black box automation or semi gray box automation? That is correct. For initial trading capital under mid five figures, leverage is required. Although my strategy isn't based on derivatives, I have considered the possibility of using them to trade pairs. I eventually decided against using options to trade pairs as there is the added complications of time decay, volatility etc. As such, I've relied on simple leverage long and short positions via CFDs. The CFD brokers I've investigated offer commission rates around 0.1%. Although this is quite low, it still has a major effect on profitability due to the nature of pairs trading e.g. Long position percent change, plus 3% short position percent change, minus 1.5% commission open and close, 0.2% total profit, 1.5% or 2 to 0 0.2 equals plus 0.55% as you can see, a commission rate of 0.1% still has a huge effect despite the divergence between the long and short position. As I mentioned before, volatility helps to delay the cumption and hence improve profitability. Thanks a lot for this information. I've always kept an eye on the VIX but never really given it much consideration in trading. Perhaps you can elaborate further on analyzing the VIX. Reading about your prior business was inspirational and I commend you for already achieving major success. And as they say, Failure is just a form of experience and learning which conditions us on our path to success. I can only imagine how difficult it is to manage other people's money as there is the added pressure of performance and dealing with over-involved investors. Nonetheless, the ultimate dream of many traders is to develop a strong trading history and establish a trading fund. Down the track. Is this what you plan on doing or are you planning to supplement other business ideas using proceeds from the stock market? For short term trading, I would have to say 100% black box automation. The system would be used to quickly determine and analyze potential trades. For long term trading, I would plan all trades myself or perhaps utilize a semi-automated system under my supervision.
basically I use it coupled with my modified version of linear regression theory. Understanding how the index and others similar to it operate may be beneficial, some background on the VIX that you or others may find interesting or helpful is that it went through a transformation in 2003 from its original 1990-ish and limited black skulls model and is now designed to better represent a fuller range of volatility, the early version used eight near term at the money S&P 100 calls and puts whereas the revised version uses at the money and out of the money SPX S&P 500 calls and puts. What many don't know is there is also a Nasdaq fear index the VXN and there are others for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, Crude, Gold, Russell 2000 and Euro. I personally am not bothered by trading other people's money because so long as I follow my system, there is limited to no emotion. But what's interesting though is that since I cut ties with that investor group, I've recently been to a few meetup groups for traders where I've actually had people from the group follow me out and want to get my number to network with me and strangely a few days ago someone else approached me with interest in me trading his money. But at this point, first and foremost, I need to get some proof back in the pudding with my trading first and once I reach a specific level, I will apply to prop trade remote with an arcade such as Echo or Bright and from a legal view, I won't be able to trade investor money with prop leverage. I was actually kicking around the idea about starting a journal in the private section here in the fast lane so that I can disclose some minor parts of my edge, whereas I haven't done that out here in the free world yet. But as many of us traders know from reading ET or TL or SI, we've all seen multitudes of traders journal their beliefs only to end up blown up. So there is a lot of rice paper this grasshopper has to walk across first, and I am aware. To answer your last question, when I reach certain levels with trading, I will definitely diversify into cash flow or hands off investments. My current time period is less than two years with prop in less than one. Thanks again for your contribution to this thread. It seems that when an op posts too much, nobody else wants to comment. BP caught using altered image of command center. Normally we only use Photoshop for the typical purposes of color correction and cropping, Dean told the paper. In this case they copied and pasted three rough screen images in the original photo over three screens that were not running video feeds at the time. China oil spill too? Great Lakes oil spill too? At this point I'm thinking it may be safe to predict additional record breaking oil spills around the world as this seems to me to be beyond coincidence. Tofora how can you even say that it is beyond coincidence? You're merely looking for events that confirm your belief. Of course if you look for disasters that's what you'll find. I'd be willing to guarantee you a year from today I can find a bunch of disasters too. It's merely you creating a belief and looking for anything to confirm it rather than truly finding out. I'm not going to argue about weather, full moons, and what not affecting behavior. They do. Statistically at least. It's really biased to state anything bad happening a couple months before an event happens proves it though. Remember, I will go around to you next year a bunch of bad events for the economy will happen too. I'm going to say it occurs because I said it will happen. So, if anything bad happens next July, that's proof I control the economy. Colon smug too. The show American Greed on CNBC did a story on a guy named Martin Frankel that claimed to make stock market trades based on great astrological events. He turned out to be a common running a Ponzi scheme though. Once his brokerage was shut down by the SEC and got a slap on the wrist, he started buying up small insurance companies and raided their coffers. When he was finally caught he had stolen about $200 million from the policyholders. Pretty interesting story if you get a chance to read up on it. I see, you're missing my point altogether here, but no big deal. I'm not looking for a debate. You have your beliefs, I have mine. Zero sum, good luck to you in your fast lane endeavors. ITI Tanium, welcome to the board.
I don't watch American Greed because it's negative but strangely, it's on right now. Colon SMX4, if it was a program about someone showing actual theory, and demonstrating it, I'd be more interested. I don't like programs about people trying to get one over on others. It's too much negativity for me. As far as my beliefs towards stock market predictions caused by planetary alignments, I would never trade based on them because my trades don't allow for the required time frame, and above all else, there are way too many additional dynamics that occur daily. But, as I've mentioned previously in this thread, if the probabilities shift from where we're at now which is what I would consider to be sideways, I would position my trades accordingly. And by the way, that's interesting work you do, are you a CCNA or CCNP by chance? Or is your line of work not so directly tied to networking? Ah, my bad. Just curious what your point is for this then? I don't plan to debate it, just curious now. Never bad to hear another puff, you know? I see, as much as I'd like to get political here, I'm not going to as this isn't what this forum is for. But, I'll step out and make a prediction for you and others as to what my tea leaves are showing. I predict that on September 30th if the Nasdaq closes at or around 2000, I believe the market will sell off down to possibly around 1500-ish over the course of the next three months. If it's already below this point September 30th, then I would have to look at that point to see if there is something to go on. But right now for average watchers, the weekly looks weak, but the quarters are holding nice, cheers. One more dynamic to look at though is the SPX which currently isn't looking so good right now and has a lot of work ahead of it. The formation it is forming is best explained in the image seen here, that bottom dotted line is basically where the S&P is at now. Please read. I thought climate change was old news. And aren't we already set up for a depression anyway? These economic recessions or depressions are on their way well before any planetary alignments would affect us. Forza, please better explain what you mean by this statement so I can better understand what you're asking, for anyone who wants to get a view of what the formation of the planets is supposed to look like, go here. I mean with all the money being printed by governments. A depression could happen anyway. Also, astronomists, scientists with way more solar system expertise than astrologists, don't seem very aware of any planetary alignment. When you Google planetary alignment, not much comes up about the August 2010 alignment. My girlfriend is on my back to go grocery shopping, so I'll dig out some stuff in a little while. SMXG colon SMX4. Okay I'm back. Quick question are you inquiring as to why I keep posting this stuff and you think I'm a bit of a loony tune, or do you have a genuine interest in financial markets and can't understand how or why planets would have an effect? I'm afraid it's the former astronomers really don't seem to be aware that there is a five planet alignment at this time. Three maybe, but not five. Or you are L. Check your dates. Your link is for 2002. And here's 5.4 million results of other Looney Tunes I found on a simple Google search. I'm willing to bet if you start now with result 1 you'll find someone out there out of the 5.4 million results who will actually find validity in your argument. My search was. Cardinal Climax states anyway, I'm done with this non-productive back and forth. Good luck to you in your fast lane endeavors. The link mentioned an alignment of three planets, yes back in 2002. I couldn't find anything about the cardinal climax alignment. If astronomers believe there to be a planetary alignment of five planets, there would be astronomy pages in the first few pages of Google results. All I see are astrology and trading pages. If no one told us this sort of thing was going to happen we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. The effects this alignment might have on us isn't noticeable enough for mass recognition. Gentlemen, you guys are aware that there is a solar blast headed towards the Earth at around a million miles per hour right now, right? Also, 
you are aware that it may have the capacity to shut down grids all over the world, right? I gave a heads up a month ago guys. I don't know the future but I do know that NASA has on their front page the solar flare that's coming at us, and I guess if it makes us feel better we can call it a coincidence that it occurred August 1st. All I said was be aware. I guess we could also ignore the record heat worldwide and record floods and other possible future occurrences, but what's wrong with being aware? Here's Hulbert on Crawford, I never said this was going to happen or that was going to happen. All I said was be aware, and I'm sticking to it. Hey it looks like astronomers talked about an alignment in July 2010 of three planets. Predicted in 2002. Haha, ha, too superstitious for me. I agree with almost all of what you say man, i.e. outside forces like the moon backslash sunlight affects people's behaviors, record heat, and it's great to be aware. Why do you put the blame on how planets are aligned though? If it makes you feel comfortable to say all this is happening because of X and I cannot control X, so be it, but don't keep bringing X up in this. Removing the idea of X there is some interesting info in here. Just give info, and let people decide for themselves what is or isn't causing something, the solar flare being like a huge EMP is pretty awesome isn't it? The northern lights it could cause will be glorious. Sorry, not falling in that trap bud. Just because X occurs with Y, doesn't mean X caused Y but I guess it looks as though it does when you believe it does. And then on top of that, you want to believe it does. Scientists aren't expecting much damage from the solar flare, if any. Tophara. What do you mean? What trap? Correlation doesn't mean causation. The number of pirates have been declining over the years, and temperatures have, like you said, reached record highs. The fact that one occurred and then something else also occurred doesn't mean one caused the other. Oh well, just had to get that off my chest. I'm not pointing blame anywhere except saying what if and be aware. The last time there was a coronal mass ejection was in 01. In 01 the market took a dive. The Nasdaq hasn't recovered since. Out of curiosity, are you guys active traders? Not passive, active. Nah, I'm not an active trader. What you said in this last post I agree. It is very important to look at people's behaviors when something has occurred in the past, it's definitely very reasonable to assume it could take a dip again. Like I said though man, much of what you said in here it good to be looking at for the effects on the market. I just didn't agree with the notion of the planets aligning a certain way somehow influenced it, you know? I'm not a trader. Looks like the Nasdaq was diving well before the coronal mass of April or May 2001 struck. I see, do me a favor, please. Look up and research WD GAN. And then do the same with Fibonacci. But, do a detailed study. I'm arguing based on theories of the past. You're arguing based on what you've learned to comprehend. And out to bait it believe it or not. Sometimes 2 plus 2 equals more than follow. Guys, I'm going to sleep. ZZZZZZZZZZZZZZ have a good one. Coincidences of the past maybe. Good night. Forza my dad can beat up your dad. And I know you are. What am I? Lol have a good night, sleep. Carrot haha looks like neither of us will be changing our opinions on this. Things I feel strongly about I'm not great at just saying, oh well we think differently. I don't look to start a fight, but I do feel compelled to throw out my point zero two. I will look up those two people at some point though, when I cut back on some of my learning in other areas, maybe if I get into trading we'll have to just challenge our views head to head. Are there really record environmental disasters lately? Or is it just easier for the world to communicate each and every little bump in the road we go over now? Ten years ago if it rained ten days in a row we would think to ourselves how unlucky we were. But now if it rains ten days in a row it is somehow linked to global warming and Jesus really did cause a mass flood that flooded the planet. Stop making your points off of somebody else's publicized theories.
if I was a doctor of astrology and found out some effed up shit was about to happen, I definitely wouldn't post it in the blog or article this improved media humans have access to is just driving me crazy. Come up with your own conclusions and you will live happier lives. Logic or reasoning or personal experience publications or B.S. statistics. I see, it will give you a little more insight to why I'm so adamant. Here, and it's all based off of natural order. Gan was one of the greatest traders ever. Nowadays the top guy is Steve Cohen. He's not a natural order guy. There are numerous systems and techniques used to take money from the market and even today Gan's techniques are highly regarded. Fibonacci, Fib Numbers and Elliott Wave Theory is also natural order based, and used today by numerous successful traders. Elliott Wave, Fibs, Bla 2 colon Bla 2 colon Bla 2, and yeah, I know Coco, Banana. I did some research on this topic years ago. From what I concluded, the amount at which natural disasters are occurring are not different than the past. There is strong evidence, however, that the severity of these natural disasters are on the rise. It is undetermined if this is normal or not, although there are tons of opinions and theories. Some say over the scope of time, this is a natural thing and that we have only been keeping records for a short period of time but there are thousand year cycles. Others think it is only now and never before and it's due to mankind hurting the planet. The sophistication of modern technology has allowed us to keep track of every rumble, every disturbance, and every little piece of debris entering our atmosphere. It may appear more things are happening, but in reality we are learning that these things go on all the time. As with earthquakes, older technology only allowed the larger quakes to be recorded. Today. We pick up on all the small rumbles, and record them, making it appear that there is more activity. What is interesting, however, is that the severity of the earthquakes, as well as hurricanes are on the rise. As an example, in the earlier part of the century they only recorded earthquakes that were over 5.0 on the Richter scale. Don't quote me on this number since I can't remember but I am going to use this as an example. Every year they recorded them. Over 70 plus years it was relatively steady with some years having slightly more earthquakes that were severe while other years having less. After the 1990s the amount of earthquakes over the 5.0 mark all of a sudden spiked and has been on a steady increase for the last couple of decades. This has all been the same for hurricanes, tornadoes, and the temperature. The real question is why? Is it truly man-made or is it a natural occurrence? I also did some research on planetary alignments along with both solar and lunar eclipses. If you document when they occurred in the past and when they are projected to occur and place them on a timeline it get very interesting. I can't discuss this here but if you research it yourself and go back for the last couple centuries and record when all the solar eclipses happened and match them up with other things that happened in history you might be amazed with what you find. Focus on big events and not mundane things. As far as earthquakes go, that specific part of the platonic plate shifting could just happen to be more bumpy and rough than the plate that was moving 100 years ago. This would cause more earthquakes, which would also add to other elements of nature increasing in activity as well. Who is to really say the severity of the storms are worse now compared to 500 years ago? They really had no way of keeping records then besides paper, so if a storm was really bad like Katrina it would have destroyed these papers. What I could tell you as fact is a few hundred years ago our planet went through another mini ice age which killed a lot of crops and made life extremely hard on us. I'm sure the people living in those days did not have any technology rumbling around which caused it. It just happened. I remember when I was a young lad. Oh it was about the year 851 AD. It was only a few years after the death of Pope Sergius II. What a terrible tragedy. He died of gout while trying to mediate a dispute between the patriarchs of Aquileia and Grado. Anyway, it was a stormy evening when a man on a horse dropped a letter off to the family. 
we learned that Rome just had a violent earthquake which damaged Pope Leo's wall he had built four years prior, which is also known as the Leonine Wall. It also destroyed the Colosseum. Back during that time, earthquakes were not heard of much in most parts of the world. But then again, not everyone received notification like my family did that stormy night, banana. Colon SMXG. Colon smooks smooks smooks.